So recently on YouTube, I've seen a bunch of articles, these articles on Twitter or X that this uh, Doom 3 code is super beautiful and the source code is all there for us to see. I thought we'd review it with um, Mini. So Mini's in this uh, video. Let's get into it. Thank you for so, having me. You're always here. <laughs> uh, anyways, I think I have the articles open. So the exceptional beauty of Doom 3's source code. I'm not really into game development, but uh, code is code. So they should just follow a couple methods. Mm -hmm. It should look very formatted. It should explain the code well. You're communicating your thoughts to like other people really well. And uh, let's see if it's good. All right. So the exceptional beauty of Doom 3 source code. This is a story about Doom 3 source code and how beautiful it is. Yes, beautiful. Allow me to explain. So now I'm uh, I'm expecting something, but expectations yeah, right, right. and frustration a little bit sometimes. So uh, let's see here. This guy is talking about... um. After releasing my video game DYAD, I took a little break, blah, blah, blah. This article originally appeared. I added 13,000 lines of code for main menu.cc. Okay. So it ballooned the code to, yes, yeah, like menus are going to be huge, right? Like um, you're going to be able to like press on something and then a new menu pops up. So he went through the code. I spent a bit of time going through the source code. It probably be, uh, it's probably the cleanest and nicest looking code I've ever seen. All right. And I did bring it up here. Let's just, uh, before we go deeper into the, um, Article, maybe we can uh, just look at the source code real quick. Sure, let's check it out. This is uh, pretty clean. It's all C++ code. Um, How's the fo folder structure, you think? As like a like a senior dev, like looking at it, right? I, I like there's a base that's empty, but then there's Neo. And then there's um something called CM, D3, XP, curl. So these are some like request stuff, I guess. Mm -hmm. I honestly, I cannot tell you, you know? <laughs> I see some C++ files for the UI right good for me you know it's uh it's all consistent it looks like one person wrote it mm -hmm. and that's the most important thing and um it looks fine to me some header file i think that's what an h file was um is that like yeah read me? general notes uh the source code does not contain any game data it's uh covered so uh that's fine it's just in a little explanation um we expect the solution file compatible with the express releases. So you can kind of, um, mm -hmm. they tell you how to compile it on each machine, uh, the licenses, uh, the curl library, which is, um, you know, like an HTTP request thing, JPEG library, tell you all the libraries they use. So they give like some um, credits, to, you know, libraries and codes that they use and like the, you know, the uh, copyright stuff. As a junior developer, you know, I'm sure a lot of people watching, right? Mm -hmm. Our junior devs like, how how much focus should he have on like these readmes? Because me personally, like I'm mm. not gonna lie, I'm not really good at readme, but I've seen you take hours on readmes. Well, honestly, for me, when I use a readme, I'm um I'm trying to like gather my thoughts and cause honestly, uh, I must be able to explain it to a new user or like a like a a new person that's going to help me. Right. And if I'm coding and I have my plan set in my head, someone asking me a bunch of questions is going to take away from my coding time, right? Right. And in the end, coding time is equates to money, basically, right? True. true. So if someone keeps asking me some things that are in the readme, mm -hmm. it's gotta be kind of um. Why are you asking me? Read the readme and then uh, get to work. That's kind right, of like right. what I want in the end, right? So, uh, it's just a time saver, and every little piece of thing that you're gonna do, like a comment in your code or like a, a variable name that's named correctly. It's all time savers in the end. And okay. clean code means that uh, it's saving time. And then you don't, you're not creating this technical debt where you're going to have to go back and refactor something, right? I like skimmed through the article before. They said they have like horizontal spacing. The code looks very uniform, right? This is uh, ID, register, set regs. Like they're very minimal comments, but it's very informative. But to be honest, I'm not a C++ developer. Right, I do. Code is all kind of similar anyways. So let's get into the article. Okay, so he's saying, after days of research, I was confused by my own tweet that started this whole thing. What would nice looking or beautiful, for that matter, actually mean when referring to source code, right? So I guess he asked his friends, code should be locally coherent and single function. One function should do, should do exactly one thing. It should be clear about what it's doing. That's that's so true. I think about single responsibility and separation of logic all the time. Mm -hmm. And I, like me, when I think about my code, I kind of think about a factory, or right. warehouse. I have like my factory functions. I have my whatever. Like I think about each function being a little bit of worker. 
and they and if you give a worker too many kind of things it's bound to be bad for that worker right, right. So, so every code needs to just do one thing and a local code should explain or at least hint at the overall system design definitely so all the code it should like hint like what kind of like uh patterns or whatever you're going to use right but uh code should be self-documenting comments should be avoided whenever possible comments duplicate work when both writing and reading code if you need to comment something to make it understand it should be it should be probably be rewritten so if the code gets a little bit like too complicated what they're basically saying is make it simple enough that the uh, variable name can kind of explain what it's doing say you're catching a bunch of promises in javascript maybe it should be called promise catcher right and then like a promise at all and that's like a resolver and stuff like that so Unified parsing and lexical analysis. To be honest, like I, what I know, like uh, Lexer is doing is it's uh, interpreting the code or whatever, right? In in JavaScript, mm -hmm. uh, lexical analyzer and parser all resource files are ASCII files with unified syntax, including script animations. It's just very consistent, basically, right? And it's uh, because everything is very consistent, it's easier because C plus plus is compiled. So whatever's doing that is uh, making the code cleaner and making it faster to run. Is Constantly... C++ like running from top to bottom like JavaScript does? Or... I think so, for sure. Okay. I think all code is running top to bottom, except especially when it's compiled. Okay. I, I don't like hold me to that, but I think mm -hmm. it is. Because mm -hmm. uh, the synchronous stuff that JavaScript is doing inside of like the event loop or whatever, that's like that's particular to JavaScript. Like right. Python, PHP, like all the other languages, they run line by line by line by line, right? Mm -hmm. So Doom's code is fairly rigid, although not rigid enough, in my opinion, to respect cons. Cons serves several purposes, which I believe too many programmers ignore. My rule is, should I have everything always be cons unless it can't be? Mm. So I wish all my variables were cons by default. Doom almost always sticks to a no in out parameter policy. This function, uh, so I'm just going to kind of skim through. This function definition makes me happy. Hans tells me a lot about the function, also hints to a larger system designed simply by reading this function that creation on other services. So, I mean, they're saying that, um, you know, everything's named correctly. Everything is uh, giving context to what you're actually building, the big parts. Minimal comments, I think we went over that. Um, that's fine. Mm -hmm. I think that's, that's a good thing to happen. Spacing, that's pretty obvious. Uh, if you're using like um, tabs or four spaces, two spaces, it should be very consistent. Right. And the code should look, uh look that way right? right minimal templates so there's basically you know no boilerplate code they rewrote all the um they rewrote all the required stl functions so they you know there's no like uh they kind of like the spacing inside of the code i saw maybe um they all did it like themselves like these spaces usually like you know mm -hmm. Uh, the code or the format or whatever is kind of like fixing all those spacings, but they have like their own way to code. Right. It's uh, it's all very consistent, right? It looks like one person wrote the whole thing. That's the most important thing. Mm. So, remnants of C. I mean, I know Quake three that would like yeah, Quake three. Okay, was written in C, I guess. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know that that code is like supposed to be very beautiful as well. And yeah, so. You know, what are horizontal spacing? That's uh, something I kind of saw earlier. Uh, method names, they should all be very, uh, that's like same with like variable naming. Right. And it's beautiful. So, you know, I guess, uh, you know, if you're like a coding nerd, you can appreciate like what they did in, right. in the Doom 3 code. As for me, like I, uh, like I, it looks good, right? It looks good, but I don't know enough context, I guess, about game programming or whatever. Kind of like, really know it like really deeply but i think i can appreciate that everything doesn't look like spaghetti right? right and uh you know just some code that i think that i've written that's like pretty clean right 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 mm. i was gonna actually say because um i remember when i was working for you you know and like you're the one who gave me my first break like uh when you showed me the code that you wrote you had like dude like each file was very short yeah, yeah. And I noticed that and like you really broke up everything into bits and pieces of it. So um, you know, I think it would be pretty cool if like we get to review that a little bit. Okay, cool, cool. Yeah, like what I define clean code. It, you know, it's hard to say every code is like super clean. It's very subjective too, but you know, like um me, like every file has its like own responsibility. So like I'll just go over like community post. The it's it's coffee app server. 
that I, I made, the back end server. Uh, I think you remember. Right. It was for uh, the last company I worked at. I won't yeah. mention any names. But basically, if you open up the folder, if you open up the code, and your first line of defense or line of um understanding the code is going to be the file names, right? Mm -hmm. That's the first, like as a human, don't, you don't even have to be a code or anything. Yeah. You see the file names and you open up, okay, community posts. You know exactly that it's going to have add community posts, mm -hmm. it's going to have delete community posts, get community posts, like community posts, update community posts. Right. It, it, like, you know exactly what the code is going to do in this section mm -hmm. just from the file names. So like, uh, there's like a community post factory here. Okay. Basically, uh, you have, I define a function that returns, uh, you know, a prototype mm -hmm. and inside of the function com community post factory, I have a create function that adds everything that I need to add. It's single responsibility, add community post. Basically you just, um, add the community post, make sure that, uh, it adds in the database, mm -hmm. um, add comment to community post. Basically it's, uh, adding a comment very simple mm -hmm. and um get community post you know like what the uh, parameters are the id if an id is passed it i say detail I, api mm -hmm. it gets the one community post if not you get the list of community posts yeah and just like basically yeah just uh everything is just doing this one thing here are all my get things here's like my aggregate function mm -hmm. where i can uh, kind of query the database and join the collections um, it could be broken down a little bit more, but I, you know, this file is just all about getting community posts. Right. I follow those methods and, um, yeah, I think the first line you have is the file naming then inside of the file, like, uh, whatever you're going to do in there. And, um, it gets, um, easier to work with, you know, and you want to make yourself as easy to work with as possible to really get a job. Right. Right, right, right. Oh, you know, like, uh, name things, naming things is very important. Um, your variable name should kind of explain what the code is going to do. I guess, um, you know, if someone was to like work with you to finish this project, let's say in the future one day, you know, and it's a big project. Like I know you as a senior developer, your job mainly was to teach juniors to work on these projects basically. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, where, if they see this code, like where would they start? If they right. see this code, where would they start? Yeah, like, how would you decipher this code as, as a junior? How do how 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 would they understand this code? Basically, what are the steps to kind of like reading this code? I guess just uh, you know, running the code, right? Mm -hmm. That's the first thing. So, uh, Docker compose up or whatever. Yeah. And that's gonna be here, and it's gonna be this is like a, and then you'd probably like ask your senior developer, whoever created it. Mm -hmm. You have the README to like check or whatever. Right. The first thing is how do you run this code, right? Mm -hmm, right. And then once the code is running, then you can kind of decipher what, you know, what needs to be done. Mm -hmm. And you're going to have your uh, like task board or Jira or Trello or, or GitHub projects, whatever you're going to use. Right. There's going to be like um, tasks to do, right? Because there's unfinished stuff as well. Right. Always. So uh, basically, like, is it all running in Docker? Can I just run Docker combos up and everything goes up? Sure. And then once there, you look at the, the tasks that are left to do, and then you get started, right? Mm -hmm. The code in like the correct way. I think everything is in here, like the ESLint, mm -hmm. your prettier file is all in here to kind of make sure the code is pretty good. Right. And um, it would just about be like getting your hands dirty, right? For you, what are like the top three things that makes a beautiful code as a person, web development, mobile development person? Mm, I think... There's uh something I always try to follow. Mm -hmm. There's who's this guy? Builder, builder, builder Bob. No, no, no. Uncle Bob. Mm -hmm. Clean code. It's a blog. Oh, okay, cool. Uh, I try to read this or like I I used to read this a lot, and it's about like clean architecture. Right. When I was first learning how to code, I had this printed out in my room mm -hmm. to kind of like you know like really look at it. Right. And um, you have your entities. And then you have your use cases. And basically all this is saying is you have your separation of logic, right? Mm -hmm. Everything is doing its own thing. How you would start writing the code is making sure like, hey, is the route handling the route? And do I have a controller here to kind of 
handle all that control with the database. And I'm not just mixing everything into like one little pot, right? Mm -hmm. I, I have my, you know, I have, maybe I have my pot, then I have my stir, then I have my ingredients and I kind of separate everything so I, they can be reused in other places, right? Mm -hmm. Like I'm always going to talk to the database in the same way through my adapter, right? right? Say I have one parameter going in a get request. I'm probably going to put it at a path parameter rather than like a get request body. Have the code very consistent. And as long as it's consistent and you're following the rules of whatever is already in place, then go for it. And if you feel like what's in place is kind of like really bad, make your own folder mm -hmm. and code in the way that you want and make it very readable, but able to be used like a node module, like basically like a local node module. And that would be like a good way that um, you can separate your code and code in the way that you need to. And then later on, you can always refactor it or redo it in the way that it needs to be done. Yeah, I think um thing that you always stress and I think it's underestimated is like the fact that um, in the beginning, when we're learning programming, like we're a solo developer, um, you know, in the job field, you have to work with others, right? And it's underestimated writing beautiful code, you know? So, that is true. And there are definitely a lot of YouTube about how to write the clean architecture code. Right. I have a bunch of things and I watched all of them. Like right. not all of them, there's too many. I've watched many of them. You're not the first person that's doing the code, right? There are many people that have done it before and everybody has a lot of opinions. But if you have enough knowledge, I think you can um, pick the things that you want to do, mm -hmm. make arguments for why it needs to be the way that it needs to be, right? Right. And it, I think the kind of argument where it's like, okay, because this person said this, let's do it this way. Right. I think it's not a very good way to do it. Mm -hmm. I think you need a lot of perspective. It, I'm not saying like read every, every little thing, right? Maybe read the clean code blog and then read something about like a different architecture, right? And then pick out the things that you want and make your own. Right. But like make your own abstraction of clean architecture or something. But mm -hmm. like if you read this book, clean architecture and stuff, it's actually like it's broken down a little bit too much. Like you have like a function and yeah. he says like the function should only be like five lines at most. <laughs> and then you call a function inside of a function and that function called the function inside of a function. And it gets like, it gets a little too crazy. I mean, you know, in the end, uh, you're the one that's going to be working on it. So make it as easy as possible. Yeah, that's, you're going to yeah. have to, don't get into fights. Just make the code easy to work on. And if it's easy for you to work on and you can make arguments for why it's easy to work on, then you can explain to other people, you know, how to do it, right? No code is supposed to be an obstacle for someone. Um, you know, if you want to ever uh, talk to people like me, Mini, or uh, any people looking to get, you know, hands dirty in programming or uh, ask any questions, just come to the Discord. The link, it'll be linked in the description. You know, I always say, if I can do it, you can do it too. Coding saves lives.